Hey everyone, welcome to the Imperial Minis channel. This is Randall, and thanks for joining me on this special topics video that will focus on producing a tier list of Stark and Baratheon units for inclusion in the Brotherhood Without Banners faction of Simon's A Song of Ice and Fire tabletop miniatures game. Everyone likes tier list videos, whether you agree or disagree with the ratings, so here's my first go at one. The Brotherhood faction has a unique faction rule that allows them to bring one Stark or Baratheon unit into their army in addition to the standard neutral allowance of 12 points. So conceivably, a Brotherhood army could have an entire 20 out of 40 army points composed of non-Brotherhood units. This video will focus on sorting through the 30 or so Stark and Baratheon units that may be included in a Brotherhood army, to figure out which units are your best options and which ones you should just completely ignore. Now, it's important to state up front what this tier list is not. It is not a tier list of the best Stark and Baratheon units. This list may look quite different if I was ranking Stark units within the Stark faction and Baratheon units within the Baratheon faction. This tier list is for Stark and Baratheon units within the Brotherhood faction. In addition to that, this is a discussion of which one unit you can include in your army. So it is important to discuss the concept of opportunity cost as it relates to your choice of Stark and Baratheon units. Since you can only choose one single Stark or Baratheon unit, each unit in this tier list will be judged both on their quality within the Brotherhood faction and on the opportunity cost of selecting them over another unit. In this context, opportunity cost means the cost to your army of selecting one unit over another. For example, if you select Stark Outriders for your Brotherhood army, part of the opportunity cost is that you can't bring Tully Cavaliers in your army. This opportunity cost will be one of the factors with which I will be rating these 30 or so units. So while I will be rating some units with C or D ratings, I'm not necessarily saying that these are bad units. I'm saying that in the Brotherhood faction, and in comparison with its peers in a zero-sum game, they fall behind their peers. I'll start off rating the Stark units in ascending order by points cost, and then do the same with the Baratheon faction units. Hopefully by the end of this exercise, it will provide Brotherhood players with a more manageable short list of units to focus on acquiring, painting, or considering for play. I also hope that over the course of the discussion, it will give Brotherhood players some ideas of how to use those units, as there are no doubt a ton of interesting ways to synergize the Brotherhood commanders, tactics cards, and unit attachments with the Stark and Baratheon units. Now very quickly before we get on to our first unit, I want to just run through the different tiers and what they mean to me, and kind of what informs my ranking of them. So S tier for me is a unit that's amazing in just about any list. An A tier unit is going to be strong in most lists. B is going to be usable or decent in certain lists, so uh, you know this will be maybe commander dependent or attachment dependent. C is going to be a unit that's weak in most lists, and then D is going to be a unit that's just completely unusable or just not a just not a, a smart use of your points in pretty much every single list uh, in Brotherhood. Now, without any further ado, let's kick off the tier list rankings. All right, so looking at our first unit, the Kranog Men Trackers, five-point infantry unit. Now, I'm going to try to be pretty quick here on some of these units because we do have a lot of units to get through, and I know no one wants to sit through like an hour and a half of tier list uh, discussion. So Kranog Men Trackers, I think they have some pretty interesting tools that the Brotherhood could make use of. Uh, throwing out a vulnerable token with marked target is useful because the, the Brotherhood doesn't have a, a ton of token generation. Hidden Traps I can see being uh, pretty good in, in the Brotherhood as well. That said, the the unit itself, the wounds, uh, like the value you get for the 12 wounds with a 6 plus armor save and a 7 plus morale and a pretty unimpressive um, melee and, and ranged attack uh, make these guys a little less impressive when you're going to have an army that probably already has a, a peasant unit or two. So... I'm regrettably going to have to put these guys in the C tier. I, I do think their orders have some uh, some use, and, and maybe folks can find some, some good uses for them, but uh, this the kind of the question of opportunity cost is gonna is gonna really drop some the ratings of some of these units a lot, I think, since this would be the only Starker Baratheon unit you could take in the army. So these guys are gonna be a C for me. Now moving on to the Stark Sworn Swords, five-point infantry unit. Uh, these guys, really, there's there's not a whole lot to say about them. I think you could compare them a little bit to the Brotherhood Men of, Men at Arms. Uh, the, the Men at Arms are quite a bit better, in my opinion. 
Uh, and for one point more, I think you, you get a lot more out of the, the Brotherhood men-at-arms. You have access to uh, Sundering, which is great, and the men-at-arms don't take up your one Stark or Baratheon slot. So for me, the Stark Sworn Swords don't differentiate themselves enough, despite being one point cheaper. So I'm dropping them also into the C tier uh, with the Cranog Wind Trackers. All right, moving on to the House Karstark Loyalists. These guys are a five-point infantry unit. Uh, they're the first, I'd say, uh, interesting choice, or the first choice that made me kind of scratch my head a little bit. So, uh, first of all, I really like the sculpts of these guys. Um, they got updated recently in Season 4 to uh, change their, their abilities. And now they're, they're more of a kind of a panicky unit. So, I think these guys do have some play in a Lady Stoneheart list. So, if you throw Lady Stoneheart in, him, in them... You have Horrific Visage, Intimidating Presence, and then these guys have, uh, they have Vicious natively. So they, you know, when they charge something, they make them panicked, and they also have the ability to make something panicked or vulnerable when you attack them. So I, I do think these guys have a little bit of play in a Catelyn Stark, Lady Stoneheart list. They are, all, they are also five points, so that's quite cheap if you want to invest a little bit more points into having let's say, uh, Sworn Knights in your in your army, or having a, a high-activation peasant-heavy list. So these guys aren't terrible. I think they're probably better in Brotherhood than they are in Starks. So these guys are going to go into the B tier for me, uh, which is kind of a commander-dependent tier uh, for, for these guys. So th I wouldn't say they're strong in every list. They definitely have some play in a Catelyn Stark list. I, I might pick them up myself just for that exact purpose. So for me, they're going to be B tier. Now moving on to the House Karstark Spearmen. So these guys are a five point infantry unit. They have a couple of abilities here. I, you know, I'm just going to cut to the chase. I think these guys are pretty garbage in Brotherhood. I've never been impressed with them in Starks either. I think these guys still need some work to kind of, uh, work on their identity a little bit. So, uh, not going to spend too much time on them. For me, they're going to be our first D tier unit. So that's where they're going. All right, moving on to House Tully Sworn Shields, six point infantry unit. Uh, so these guys are a, quite a tanky unit. They've always been a tanky unit. Uh, they've been always been a pretty boring unit, just kind of a hold the line unit, never do a ton of damage or anything. I think maybe in, uh, in the Brotherhood, they could do a little bit more damage with gang up. You know, you always kind of have that gang up uh, potential hanging over your head whenever you're talking about anything in Brotherhood. Um, but these guys, they're a, you know, they're a cheap, uh, they're a kind of a cheap defensive unit. So, um, I, I still don't think you take them as your one Stark or Baratheon unit. Um, I think you have other things you can, you can take in the faction. I think even peasants and men-at-arms can be a little bit tankier with some of the tools that the faction has. So, I don't think these are the one unit you take with you. So, for me, th these guys are going to go into the C tier. Uh, with the sworn with the sworn swords and the Cranagman trackers. Now everybody's favorite ranged unit, the Stark Bowmen. The they are the same cost as the Brotherhood archers and are just totally sitting on the bench in compared to in comparison with the the Brotherhood archers. There's not much to say about these poor guys at all. Uh, I mean, look at the picture of him. He looks pathetic. They are pathetic in most circumstances, and certainly in a bro in the Brotherhood faction, these guys are just sucking so they're going to go in the d tier with the car stark spearman all right now the house umber berserkers so these guys are going to be our first really spicy unit i would say um these guys have always been pretty decent in the stark faction they have a lot of there's a lot of stuff in the stark faction to really make these guys turn into absolute monsters and the brotherhood faction also has has a lot of stuff that can really turn these guys up to a, a 10 um you know for example you could put these guys in a Thoros of Mirror Commander uh, with a commander attachment to give these guys Sundering and Vicious, to put them on a, a 3 plus morale natively and take them all the way down to a, a 2 plus auto, auto pass morale quite quickly. Um, so you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do with these guys. You could also put L Lem Lemon Cloak in them to give them battle scars, which uh, Starks don't generally don't generally use too much. I think Mage Mormont attachment has battle scars, but um, you could put 
Lem Lemon Cloak in here for free, if that's your one free attachment point to give these guys any one of those abilities uh, to just roll your highest uh, attack die value right out the gate. Barrack Dundarian is uh, the two point attachment is pretty insane in these guys because he can give them plus two attack dice. So, um, you know, you could potentially be throwing 11 attack dice at something. And then Thoros of Mir two point attachment is also interesting in here because he, he has Relentless. So, if these guys are getting beat up a ton uh, with Relentless, they could just be getting free eight or nine dice attacks into stuff. So uh, these guys for me are, are quite interesting, and I don't think they're as niche of a of a pick as the Karstark Loyalists. So for me, these guys are going to be our first A tier unit. Um, I I think they do have a lot of different things they could do in the faction, and um, they they seem like a pretty exciting pick. Now moving on to the House Mormont She Bears six point infantry attachment or infantry unit, excuse me. Uh, now these ladies, I think, have a lot of play in the Brotherhood faction. The Brotherhood faction has a lot of morale test stuff going on for them. They have a couple of faith units. So you have Thoris of Mir, Commander, who has uh, he has a, a faith mechanic. So every every round you could pop Warcry on these ladies and potentially pick up a free uh, Relor faith token. Using a faith token with them. You uh, you always have critical blow, but then you can give these ladies sundering and vicious, and uh, just kind of in the base case, they're a, a pretty pretty solid kind of pretty solid uh, unit. I would say four plus six plus is I think the same defensive stats as the men at arms. Five plus movement, uh, seven six five dice decay is is pretty decent uh, for a six point infantry unit. And, you know, if they get beat up a little bit, they're going to go to a 3+, plus, and then if they're ganging up on something, they're going to a 2+, plus to hit. So, I think these, these ladies have a lot of uh, play in various Brotherhood lists. Uh, you could also put Barrack 2-point attachment in them to get that sweet plus 2 attack dice to make them throw even more dice. And when you have a unit with critical blow, the more dice you can throw at something, the, the more chances you have to get crit blow hits. So, uh, you know, if, you, if these ladies are throwing nine dice with critical blow and you pick up a couple of crit blow hits in there, you could easily be doing ten hits on something, which is, which is pretty insane. So, um, these ladies for me are pretty exciting. They're, uh, I recently picked up a box of them and I haven't bought any Stark units in a couple of years. And, uh, so I'm very excited for them and I'm putting them... I'm not putting them in S tier because they are still a little bit dependent on which attachment and um, commander you put them in, but I am going to put them solidly in the A tier. All right, now the next unit are House Mormont Bruisers, another six-point infantry unit. And I'm a little conflicted on these guys, whether they're garbage or halfway decent. So you know, these guys have this Mace and Spike ability where they could get crit blow, precision, or re-rolling any attack dice, depending on how many ranks they have. Um, they already have disrupt, so there's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of overlap with uh, with the peasants. So you know if you're ganging up with these guys, the disrupt on these guys isn't going to be doing too much for you. Um, but they do have a little bit of play if you're thinking about putting them in Thoris of Mir commander attachment. Um, if you're just kind of going for that that full house of uh, crit blow, precision, sundering, and vicious, just getting all the keywords at once, if, if that's kind of your thing you want to go for, you could put them in Thoris of Mir um, to kind of have a, a unit that can have every single attack keyword. I don't think that's a very compelling reason to bring them, personally, but it's something you could do. So for these guys, I'm going to I'm gonna put them in C. Uh, I think they're just a little too much of a of a kind of funsies pick to throw into the B tier. So for me, they're going to be a C pick. Now moving on to our first cavalry unit of the list, it's going to be the Stark Outriders at six points. These guys recently got changed a little bit, and uh, now they have tactical reposition. Ambush is is pretty decent in the Brotherhood faction because Brotherhood has a lot of movement stuff uh, they can do. Um, but then the question comes back to opportunity cost here. So you have a six point cavalry unit and let's look at your other six point options you have here in the brotherhood faction so if you have six points to spend on a cavalry unit do you want to take stark outriders or do you want to take crownland scouts who have they also have tactical reposition but then they also have marked target uh they also have better um 
Oh, they don't have better armor, uh, but they they have worse uh, speed. I, I would say the the only thing Stark Outriders have going for them really is is the the speed and maybe the 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 tactical reposition, the speed. But then you're also looking at the Riders of Highgarden for six points, who are a lance cav unit that can do some crazy things in this faction. Uh, so for me, I am just not finding them to be a better pick than either of those other two units. So for me, they're going in the C tier. Now the House Umber Great Axes, seven point infantry unit. There's been a lot of chatter I've, I've been hearing online about these guys and that they can do some pretty cool things. They have Vicious, so if uh, just like the Car Stark Loyalist, if you're looking at Catelyn Stark, Lady Stoneheart, you could throw them into her uh, her unit to give that kind of intimidating presence, Vicious synergy. And they do have the Ferocious Assault, so when you charge something, you make it panicked. And these guys hit pretty hard. Um, you know, you, you could also throw, just like a couple of other units I've talked about, you could throw Barrack 2.0 attachment into them to get plus two dice because with executioner's fury you have to roll a, a six to block anything so these guys are going to probably put a lot of uh, wounds through um so these guys aren't they're not a top tier pick for me they're not a they're not a c pick either because i think they can do some work uh, but they are a seven point infantry unit so they are a little pricey uh, for me though they're going to go in the b tier because I do think they they have some play. They I think they they could make be a playmaker in your list uh, given the right circumstances. All right, now the Cranogmen Bog Devils. Now these guys I've been a little conflicted over. So they have a really interesting toolkit here with scout openings that could potentially help themselves or any of your other units to push through a lot of damage. You could do scout openings on Brotherhood archers to get rerolls and precision. Uh, Swift Retreat Swift retreat is always good to get these guys out of there. And Poison Tridents is good for generating tokens and putting poison on things. Um, just looking at attachments you could put them in. I could see putting Thoris of Mere 2 point attachment in them for Relentless to keep applying weakened tokens or Cranog poison on, onto uh, your target. And if it was just that, I would say these guys were probably a, a C unit because they're expensive, uh, a little bit niche, but then I had a eureka moment, fell off my chair, and thought about what if you put Lady Stoneheart or the Hangwoman uh, NCU influence onto an enemy unit that was poisoned with Cranog poison. So looking at Cranog poison, each time this unit performs an action before resolving that action, it suffers one wound, plus one wound if it has any condition tokens on it. And then reading the Catelyn Stark NCU, while influencing an enemy combat unit, each time this unit performs an action, before resolving that action, it suffers one wound. So you could potentially have a situation here where you have poisoned a unit that has a condition token on it and influenced them with Catelyn Stark. And now that unit has the potential to be taking three wounds whenever it takes an action. Now, if you're doing this to a, a unit that's not engaged with anything then that unit could just sit there and pass their, um, you know, pass their turn. But if you got this on a unit that was engaged with something, especially like a, a single model unit, like a mountain that rides or a dragon or something like that, you that unit has to take an action to either attack or retreat. And that unit is going to take a big chunk of wounds just to do anything. So I think this is too cool of a combo to relegate to the C tier. So for me, it is a bit situational and takes a little setup, um, but the unit does have some good abilities on it no matter what, whether you do this this poison shenanigans. So I'm going to put them in the B tier, and uh, I'm actually pretty excited to see what people do with them. Now, moving on to the Winterfell Guard, a 7-point infantry unit. This is another unit I was a little bit conflicted over until I remembered one of their abilities that I had forgotten about. I think I was originally going to throw them in the B tier, um, just because they kind of are in the shade a little bit when standing next to the Kingsmen as a elite 7-point infantry unit. Uh, but, you know, there's they have Adaptive, so Adaptive reduces the cost of an attachment in this unit by 1. So you could throw a, a free, you know, lem, lemon cloak into them or anything, or reduce the cost of a two-point attachment by one. Uh, and then that would stack with the Brotherhood's ability to reduce 
the cost of any attachment by one. So potentially you could put a, a two point attachment in these guys completely for zero cost, which is pretty crazy. So uh, another note, I've, I've heard some people talking about putting Gendry in them to get, you know, some sort of two plus armor save, but uh, just to let folks know that won't work because improved defenses, even though it the two abilities have different zone controls. The The name of the ability is the same, so you can't stack an ability with the same name. Um, resilience is good, but I'm not going to pay two points for resilience. So uh, the fact that these guys are a solid, a solid elite infantry unit and uh, adaptive is just value on these guys on top of the, the one-point uh, attachment allowance you have in the Brotherhood faction. I was going to put these guys in the B tier, but I'm going to have to put them in the A tier just because of the potential for what you can do uh, attachment-wise in them. Moving on to House Umber Ravagers, a 7-point cavalry unit. So these guys are also a little bit interesting uh, of a choice for me. I, you know, I, I was kind of wrestling with where to put them. I'm still not 100% sure. I think there is some use for them. I don't think there's maybe as much use as there is in the Stark faction for them, but they, you know, they do have the potential to get uh, vicious and make a unit panicked. Sundering is always just a very valuable keyword. So uh, to, just for the sake of kind of sitting on the fence with them a little bit, I'm going to put them in the B tier. I They're kind of between B and C for me because I'm, I'm just not really sure if they're worth being in the B tier. Uh, but then I'm also at the risk of, uh, I feel like I'm risking overlooking something by putting them in the C tier. So I'm going to just hedge my bets and put them in the B tier. Now moving on to the big bad of the Stark faction, the House Tully Cavaliers, eight point cavalry unit. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. I think everybody knows where these guys are probably going to go. Yeah, these guys have Rally Banner, uh, which allows your units to restore one wound within short range when they pass a morale test. We we all know Brotherhood have a lot of morale test shenanigans going on. They have attachments that that uh, heal for morale tests, uh, and this would stack with those. They have tactics cards that uh, require them to take morale tests. So there's a lot of kind of explosive healing that could take place with Rally Banner in your ranks. And then, of course, let's not forget this is a Lance Cavalry unit that could do a ton of damage. They'll roll 9 dice when they're charging something, and if something is has gang up, they're going to roll 10 dice on a 2+, plus, which is insane. And if you're going to stack that with uh, Lady Stoneheart's Price of Failure, you could charge something that's engaged with peasants and just automatically hit for 10, 10 hits, which is crazy. Uh, you know, having these guys in a, in a faction with price of failure is just insane. So these guys are going to be our first S tier unit to the surprise of no one. All right, now moving on to the Baratheon faction. Our first unit is going to be the four point solo rider unit, the Dragonstone Noble. Now I like the Dragonstone Noble. I think he works, he would work, work okay in a, in a high activation Brotherhood list. I, I like his Noble's Bolster because the Brotherhood doesn't have a, a lot of ways to remove tokens. But that said, I, we kind of come back to the opportunity cost question. Is, is this the one unit out of Stark and Baratheon that you're going to want to bring? And is he, is he worth that opportunity cost? So for me, the answer is, is going to generally be no. So he's going to go into the C tier. Now our next unit is the Baratheon Wardens, a five-point infantry unit. These guys are, you know, they're kind of in the same discussion as the, the Stark Sworn Swords. They are a point cheaper, uh, but they're just not a not a terribly exciting unit. Counter-Strike does synergize with Disrupt from the Peasants, but you know, you already if you already have a bunch of bodies on the front line with the Peasants, do you really need the Baratheon Wardens up there? I'm just not sure. And then again, is this the one Stark and Baratheon unit you want to take? I don't think so. So for me, uh, these guys are unfortunately going to drop to the bottom of the list. They're going to go into the D tier. Now, the Baratheon Sentinels, also a five-point unit, got buffed a couple of patches ago. Uh, now, these guys are actually a little bit more interesting than the the uh, Wardens in the, in the Brotherhood faction because of the Sentinel keyword they have. They're, they're faster at five movement speed, and they have Sentinel, which is a fantastic movement ability. So uh, that, and they have Sundering, which is, in my opinion, the best 
attack keyword you can get. These guys are a, a bit more interesting. So these guys, I think there is play for them in the faction. Uh, it's it's a faction with some movement shenanigans, and Sentinel on top of that is great. You know, you, I could see you putting Edric Dane in this in these guys uh, to get some additional uh, healing out of retreating from from uh, combats and getting your free charges out of Sentinel. So for me, these guys, they're not bad. They're not amazing. I'm going to put them in the B tier, which is kind of that sort of conditional tier, conditionally good tier, depending on the attachment or depending on the circumstances. Our next five point Baratheon unit are the High Guard and Pikemen. Now, these guys are a, a unit I've always liked. I've never had a ton of success with them, but I, I just have, as a ancient history aficionado, I just have a a soft spot in my heart for pike phalanxes, and these guys are the closest thing to actually look like pikemen in the game. Um, so, you know, I, I have to declare my my pro pikemen bias up front here. Uh, but I, I do like these guys. I don't think they have a real great place in Brotherhood. There are some applications for them. You know, just like the lance cavalry discussion, you could use price of failure on these guys when you're charging into something uh, to potentially put in 10 or 11 hits if, uh, you know, if you, if you're going to a gang up. So price of failure could have some, some application with these guys to hit a, do a really big punch. Thoros of Mir, the commander attachment also good to give them Sundering and Vicious. Beric Dondarrion, of course, a two point attachment to give them plus two attack dice. So, you know, these guys could one shot a, a very unfortunate unit by throwing 12 dice at them. Uh, so, you know, they are an interesting unit to, to put in your army, but I am just not sure they're, they're up there in the, uh, as a, as a great choice. So I, I'm going to put them in the B tier. They could possibly be a C tier, but like I said, I have a soft spot for them. So I'm going to bump them up to the B tier. Next, we have the Baratheon Halberdiers, a six point infantry unit. So for me, these guys are, uh, these guys are still a pretty decent, uh, kind of hold the line defensive unit. So I put the I put the wardens down there in the D tier. Uh, I think these guys are quite a bit better. They have sundering as a keyword. They have uh, better dice pool. They're a movement five unit versus a movement four unit. They have taunt, so uh, you can give extra token gen to the Brotherhood faction. So I believe these guys are quite a bit better as a as one of, as your frontline defensive unit if you want a frontline tanky unit so for me these guys are going to go in the b tier they're they're not a tier because i'm not sure you're always really going to need a, a really tanky frontline unit but if you do want one i think these guys are a pretty good value at six points all right now the relor faithful six point infantry unit so these guys are very interesting in the brotherhood faction because the brotherhood do have a lot of other faith things going on and uh, just taking a look at a couple of the faith attachments, we have Thoros of Mir, Commander, and Ber Beric Dondarrion, Beric Dondarrion uh, attachment. And their two abilities are not the same name as this ability. So my assumption is that these abilities would stack and that the Relore Faithful, when they pass a morale test, would, would then get two faith tokens when uh, one attached with one of these characters. So I think that is reason enough for me that to kind of bump them higher up, higher than average in in this list. And uh, also, you you could even talk about maybe putting them into a Lady Stoneheart list. So you're not double dipping the the faith mechanic here, but putting them in Lady Stoneheart with horrific visage, intimidating presence. Uh, when this is a unit that can have access to vicious. And they are very high morale, so they're going to be passing most of the morale tests. Uh, when they charge into things, they can make them panic. So they do have some innate synergy with Catelyn Stark, Lady Stoneheart. And because this is a unit that is low on uh, armor save, they will probably be taking a lot of wounds when they get punched in the face. And Lady Stoneheart has Lash Out. So, you know, if you put Lady Stoneheart in here and they take a big hit, you can lash out for two or four wounds and then make the that uh, unit panicked and then hit them back with a vicious, intimidating presence uh, attack. So I think these guys are pretty good in in multiple ways in the faction. 
Uh, so for me, they're they're going to rise a little bit above the B B tier uh, because there are multiple ways to use them. So I'm going to put them solid, solidly in the A tier. And uh, just to mention, I haven't mentioned it before, but I'm not going to be sliding them, sliding units around within the tiers to show which one is the at the top of the A tier and which one is at the bottom. That's just too much work and is beyond the uh, rudimentary video editing and PowerPoint skills that I have. So uh, you all can just kind of mentally shuffle these around uh, to your heart's delight. Now moving on to the Relore Lightbringers, six point ranged infantry unit. This is one of my favorite units in the Baratheon faction. Uh, one of my favorite ranged units in the entire game. And in the Brotherhood faction, there is still good use for these guys. They are a vicious unit. So obviously there's some synergy there with Lady Stoneheart. But then you have to ask yourself, are they that much better than the Brotherhood Archers that you would bring them instead of the Archers? Um, you know, you compare them with the Brotherhood Archers, they're, the Archers are a little bit better in, in this faction, I would say, because of the kind of some of the movement shenanigans that they have going on. Uh, so it is a, it is kind of a tough call with these guys. I, I do think there is a place for them. I really like them quite a bit, but I think they're maybe a little bit more relegated to, to a stone heart list. So for me, even though they're a good unit, they're going to go in that B category, uh, where they're good, but probably list dependent. All right. Now moving on to the thorn watch, the, uh, this kind of unassuming unit, where I, I really, I don't like this, this picture of just uh, go off on a tangent. I really don't like this guy, uh, this picture of this guy. He, it looks like he has a, a little shaved eyebrow. Uh, I think it's probably a scar, but it, it makes it look like he's trying to be fashionable and do those little slices through his eyebrows. He also looks like he's baked, uh, which I don't want somebody with a crossbow behind me that's, you know, not in a, a good state of mind. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, these guys are quite good in the Brotherhood Without Banners faction, I think. If you look at Beric Dondarrion Commander, you could give these guys Sentinel, Pathfinder, uh, Duty to the Crown. You know, Beric Dondarrion just has so many tools to make these guys an amazing unit, uh, giving these guys a, a free charge, and they have Swift Strike, so they could then immediately pull out of that, out of that melee and then regroup to get wounds back uh they're amazing with him and then you just you can look at the the brotherhood base deck uh with sudden retreat so if these guys get attacked and they don't have any other way of getting out of out of combat you can sudden retreat to then pull them out and then heal with regroup uh forgotten fellowship can give these guys a free retreat at the top of the round can give these guys a free march to get into the flank or rear of an enemy and then Barrick has assault orders to uh, get a free charge out of these guys. So there's just a lot of options uh, in the base deck and with Barrick to do a lot of work with these guys. You could also look at just a whole bunch of other attachments and uh, uses for them. You know, Thoris of Mir uh, attachment, Fiery Charge, getting an auto six charge into something. Uh, Lady Stoneheart's Vengeance and Blood, you could put... Uh, you could put Lady Stoneheart in them to get a free attack or a free charge with these guys. Hot Pie, even. You throw Hot Pie in there. He's good in pretty much any ranged unit in the Brotherhood, I would say, because when he activates, he can remove a condition token, so you can kind of prevent your ranged units from being weakened when they activate. And then Barrack Dondarrion, two-point attachment to give them plus two attack dice when they're charging into something uh, to hit something with potentially nine dice. Um... So these guys just have a, a ton of use in in the Brotherhood, and they're only six points, so you still have a lot of points to use in your faction. So for me, they're going to be the first uh, Baratheon S-tier unit, and uh, I feel good about that placement. Now moving on to the second six-point cavalry unit, the Crownland Scouts. So like I mentioned before with the Outriders, I think I, I covered it pretty well. Uh, I think these guys kind of do a similar thing as the Outriders. They're a little slower, but I think they're a little better. So I won't dwell on them too much more, but I do like the, uh, they can give a, a unit vulnerable with marked target. Uh, I think that works really well with uh, some, of, some of the Brotherhood units that can potentially throw a lot of dice at something uh, that could be shooting into a melee. You know, you could make a, a, the target of your archers vulnerable. 
So the fact these guys can throw a vulnerable token out uh, just makes them a little bit more useful to me than the, the Outriders. So I'm going to put them in the B tier rather than in the C tier. And now moving on to the Riders of High Garden, a another six point cavalry unit. Um, there's not going to be too much to say about them. Uh, they are kind of in a similar situation as the uh, Tully Cavaliers. They they can throw a lot of dice at something. They have the same synergy with Lady Stoneheart's Price of Failure. They don't have the Rally Banner that the Tully Cavalier have. Um, with that said, though, I still think for a seven point unit or for a six point unit, excuse me, uh, you are just getting a ton of value out of these guys in the Brotherhood faction. So for me, despite the fact that they are uh, don't have as many tools as the Tully Cavaliers, they are two points cheaper and still throw a ton of dice and uh, I think are amazing in the Brotherhood. So I'm putting them in the S tier, right up there with the Thornwatch and the Tully Calf. Now moving on to the Rose Knights, a seven-point infantry unit. So these guys, I think, are kind of going to be your, your quintessential elite tanky unit for the Brotherhood. They uh, The Brotherhood has a lot of ways to kind of give trickle healing to things. So I think Deadly Bloom is going to have a lot of value in... Uh, in the Brotherhood faction. So Rose Knights, I think they work well with Beric Dondarrion, Commander, with Sentinel to give them extra move, uh, movement speed, give them a free maneuver. Pathfinder, I think, makes these guys awesome because you can just throw them in any kind of terrain, use the terrain to your advantage. And Duty to the Crown, they're going to, it's basically an improved Dauntless. And, uh, you know, so Beric Dondarrion, you basically get a Thornwatch Sentinel attachment in them, plus Sentinel, uh, plus the Sentinel ability so i think these guys are are great in in barrack dundarian i think they have they're they're good even if you don't put an attachment in them i think in the faction uh that i think they just have a good solid role in the brotherhood faction no matter what so for me they're not going to be s tier they're not going to be that kind of amazing superb unit but they're going to be a solid unit that has a place in just about any list i think so i'm going to put them in the a tier all right now the kingsmen who are kind of the baratheon faction big bad to the uh, Tully Cavalier Stark faction, big bad. These guys are pretty amazing. I, I think most people know how, how good they are in the Baratheon faction. Uh, to the last gives these guys a lot more uh, longevity. And then the Brotherhood faction has some different ways to keep units alive. Uh, you know, the Barrack has his six times too many to keep these guys alive. Um, you know, when you, when these guys take a morale test to stay alive with two to the last, you've got things like Beric Dondarrion Commander with Duty to the Crown that can just heal them for one or two after that. Uh, you've got, you could even, you could put Gendry in these guys to give them resilience and improved defenses to just make them super tanky and killy. Like right now, these guys just on their card, they are a, a very, uh, very dangerous elite melee unit but if you put gendry in them for an additional point or two depending on your um, attachment allowance these guys become a very uh, lethal melee unit and an extremely tanky melee unit so uh, for me i think if you're going to be focusing on on bringing an elite infantry uh, an elite potentially tanky infantry infantry unit into your army these guys are going to be an s tier choice for me so that's where they are. Now, looking at the Relore Queensmen, I don't think there's a lot to say about these guys. They uh, they kind of fill the same role as the Rose Knights in the faction, but I don't think they offer quite as much as the Rose Knights. They they do have the ability to be immune to vulnerable and panic tokens. They do have to the last, but uh, I just I don't think they offer as much as the Rose Knights, even though they do share a lot of stats with them. So. For me, they're a little less exciting than the Rose Knights. They are still situationally uh, decent, however, so I'm not going to drop them to the bottom of the of the uh, chart, but I am going to put them in the B tier. So they're they're good, but they're kind of conditionally good. Now looking at the Stag Knights, these guys are uh, I, I do like the Stag Knights, but I I just think that they're these guys are kind of just standing in the shadows of the Kingsmen at this point um, because we have to go back to the opportunity cost question. If you're going to take a seven-point elite Baratheon or Stark infantry unit, are you going to take the Stag Knights, or are you going to take the Kingsmen or the Winterfell Guard? And while these guys are good, I I just think they're not good enough to warrant 
bumping up high in the list. So for me, they're gonna they're gonna fall into the C category. Regrettably, I think there's just better seven point infantry units uh, that you can take. And then moving on to our last unit, the eight point cavalry unit champions of the stag. And I just you know I feel bad for these guys. I I like them, but not in the Brotherhood faction. You know the Brotherhood has their own eight point unit, the Brotherhood Sworn Knights, who I think are just better in almost every way than these guys are. Um, these guys, you know, the, the Sworn Knights are kind of a time warped version of the of the Champions of the Stag. They they have the better uh, attack dice values. They have Sundering. They have a, a kind of a conditional rally cry ability on them. They only have one one worse armor. They are faster. I just don't see a reason you take these guys at all over Tully Cav or Sworn Knights or Riders of High Garden. So, for me, unfortunately, we're going to end this uh, tier list discussion by dunking these guys down to the bottom of the barrel, and they're going to go in their rightful place in the D tier. Well, that does it for the tier list discussion. I hope viewers found value in this discussion and that it helps hone the decision making process of Brotherhood players somewhat. The choices of out-of-faction units can seem pretty daunting between the Stark, Baratheon, and neutral options, so with any luck, this video helped folks whittle down the options a bit. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like. If you agreed or disagreed with my rankings, I'd be very interested to hear your opinions in the comments section. Were there any rankings you felt I totally misjudged? Let me know below for the benefit of the rest of the audience. Until next time, this is Randall, signing off.